Hello, this is uh, the podcast for lecture five within statistics in regression, data linearization and curve fitting functions. And this is when we use uh, Mathematica. And again, bear over if something could be done better using Mathematica because I'm learning Mathematica at the same pace as you, hopefully a little in front. And uh, yeah, so I'm also improving. <clears throat> but let's start. And uh, you have been in lecture four, you were playing a little with uh, statistics, uh, linear model fit and extracting data. So hopefully it's a little easier to remember and understand what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, the F statistics, to go directly into it, is used to see if uh, uh, observe the relationship between the dependent and dependent uh, variables is valid. So if you take the data, if you remember from uh, this uh, planet data, which the uh, relation between the distance to the sun and the uh, orbital period. If you take that and run and recall, if you want to see uh, how I get the data, you can get them out here by expanding them. For example, this one, I've run the linear fit model with a second order polynomial. I asked for a confidence level of 95, and then I asked for, for the annual table. I'm not showing it all the time, but you can always, because you can download this uh, file in Blackboard, see how it's done. So if you look at this one, you have the x and you have uh, x powered, or x uh, squared, one second. Again, I just, just needed to verify something. But here you can see the parameters x, and you have uh, the degrees of freedom it's using, and how many there's left. Uh, one here. And the F statistics is the likelihood that this one is different from, uh, not different from zero. And you can see it's very, very low. It's less than, uh, yeah, this is 1%. So this is promille. I don't know what's that called in English. And this one is, uh, again, very significant. If you want to extract data, you can do it here by <coughs> asking for, you have the linear model here, and then I'm creating, this one is what is coming out here. Uh, so it's asking for adjusted squares, a kaige, and Bayesian and uh, R squared, and you can see them here. Um, so if you look at that, you can see that this one, as we've seen earlier, is really the one performing the best when you compare these. They're all significant. But this one is a lot better compared to the others. You could also ask it to sort the data based on this one where you take the degrees of freedom and penalize if there's a high number of um, parameters used or more complex model. In this case, it's not, you can't see the difference, but in many other cases, you would be able to see the difference. So if you want to know something about the parameters uh, here, then the, the typical thing is that it needs to be, uh, if the likelihood or the p-value is bigger than 5%, then uh, 
the, param the parameter is not of importance. Uh, as you saw at the last slide, it was of importance uh, for x and x squared c uh, here, because that is a lot less than 5%. And if you then want, you can ask for the parameter confidence interval. And here you set the uh, confidence level. If you look at these, you can see that they're going from minus uh, 36 to minus 22. So they're, they're not uh, containing zero. But let's see if we say we want 1% 1 or 99% uh, percent confidence level. Then you can see this suddenly change, and uh, the first variable which is is uh, intercept equal to zero. Uh, let's see if, if I can use this little toy. So if we have a line here or a model here, then it's saying that this B might as well have been zero. So it's saying here that that could be the case here, at least if we take the 99% confidence level. Uh, but if we take the 95, it's for sure it's uh, significant. For sure, it's we're relatively sure. If 99, we're really sure. I think that's the right way of saying it. Uh, if you again want to look at these data, if you want to see the confidence level, uh, for example, for the 99% confidence band, which is your yellow one here, and you have the 99.9, .9, that's really tough confidence level interval for the model, then you can plot it. And if you want to see how that's done, how I figured out to do it, it's not that difficult. But what is really important is here you have the model fit, second order. And here we take the bands uh, and the output, we catch that one and put it into a model which depends on x. And here you define it. So you show, because that's how you can merge, if you recall that. So we just take the, <clears throat> the points, or the, uh, the, the line of the best model. You take the confident bands from the two. Remember, that's two when you make a band, positive and negative. I'll come back to that. And then you define the color of them here. You can read in, in help uh, how to do that. And we'll go more into that uh, very soon. But first, you can do a little uh, assignment here. You have to do the F statistics, extract that with the standard error of 95, and find the confidence intervals. And only do that for the fourth, fifth, and sixth polygon models. You remember that when you looked at the ARMSEP uh, procedural mean squares of error. If I can do this again. If you have uh, the uh, complexity, or you plot the, the polynomial here from, which is from 1 to 10, and you ha have um, set here. It's not easy to do with a mouse. S E. Then, if you plot that, re remember that it's normally decreasing, but suddenly it's declining, and it can have a little jump there, and then continue. Uh, what is really important is this little part here. Remember that this is where the model should stop. You don't. That's a high risk that you're modeling uh, 
overfitting here, so we are modeling noise. So that's because my select, I think it was for fifth order, you can take each side and see the difference. Uh, so you do that for these two bands. And then reflect on which model you should, which is the optimal. See if it still confirms that it's a fifth. And then, of course, uh, make the plot with the confidence bands for the model. <coughs> this is my playground. You can open it if you want. There's problems often uh, when you're doing regression with uh, high degree polynomials, especially if you're doing it in Excel. But you have a try with that. Mathematica seems to be able to handle it without causing the big problems. But we will see that. So if we take, if you take the data from the uh, MIPK data. I see, I just need to pause, I think, and put that in. So I just added that from the IBK data. That's uh, the different values you have. If you look at that, uh, I'll try to expand this one. So I import the data, as you recall, here. I take the time data. And then I create a table uh, with uh, A, that's the time, powered to from 0 to 5. Then I get the x. And then I transpose it and multiply it, or dot it with x. That's a common one you have to do when you want to inverse what you're doing when you're fitting uh, or finding the parameters doing uh, minimization. You don't see it when you run it, but that's what happened. Uh, then you get something ranging, ranging from a really big number to, a, uh, from a small number to a big number, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so let's have a look at what happens. But if you normalize it, this data, you can see you get data which are looking a lot nicer than the other one. This is going uh, from 15 to 23,000. And what I did, uh, we can have a look. I think that's easier. I divided it at 24. Instead of using hours, I'm using days before I create the table. And then I power it. So it gives really nice data. But what uh, you normally do is you just take the x and you normalize that. So let's have a look at that. Uh, I think it's under it. Here uh, I normalize uh, the x again. Not not when I that's before I create the matrix. It's the vector I'm, I'm normalizing with the biggest number, uh, and it still looks okay. But if I take the classical way, I just take, calculate, create the matrix here, and then I, I divide. You can see I take first, create x, which is, uh, was it, 9 times 6? I think it is, or 17 times, I can't remember it, but it's big matrix. And then I find the maximum, and that's one of the numbers where you power it with 5 and divide with that, you know, you can see you get really small numbers here. So it's not a healthy way to do it in, in this case. It's a lot better to, to do it up here before you power it. So you have to play with that and get a feeling of what is the best way of rescaling data if you get into that situation where you have to do it. There is a way you can test it. Uh, there is a uh, a site here where you can get certified or uh, examples so you can test if your software or your method is doing okay. So 
So here you can find the different things you need. We won't go into that, you can have a go there. But let's continue and look at an example. There's a reference uh, data sorry, set for polynomial regression. And, and here you can uh, get certified values. It tells about the model, you can get the raw data. I think I have the link over here at the next page. Uh, where did I hide the link? Here it is. So here you can see the data in the browser. And if you want the raw data, you can just press this one. And you can see there is some information about the data. There's one response parameter, there's the x. This is a little tricky one because they're, they're giving y before x. Uh, and you can see that down here. Here's the parameters. And down here you get the data. That's uh, 82 uh, rows. But remember, y is first. I made this little error when I was playing with it. So if you want to illustrate this, you can do that in Mathematica. Here's the data. And uh, it took me a little while to figure this out, how to do that. But if you have a look at it, what I do is I import the data. Uh, see, I put this, and I said it's one big string. So now I have it in a string, then I tell uh, Mathematica to treat the data as a stream or as a kind of file where you can walk through here. And this is a kind of pointer. And then I say find where data or set the pointer where data is, where you can find this. And if you go back here, the first time you say data is here. I haven't found a better way to do it, but it works. And the second time is here, so I need the pointer down here. So when the pointer is there, then I say read y, x, remember y was first, the pointer, and I'm, there's a number and a number, and it runs through it. And uh, then I reverse the data, so x is first, and I put two here, it's reversing it, and I close the string. Remember, it's a kind of file you open, so you need to close it again. And then I plot it. And it works fairly well. Nice little feature. And there's some powerful things you can do in Mathematica there, but uh, that's, I think, beyond the scope of this course. So here we have the model, fitted model. And I define it as fx. And this is not, uh, that's another little function I found. I use the print to make it look better to, uh, to handle the output. And we'll do that, you can kind of using style, this means carry returns. New line, new line, you can see it jump two lines. The estimated polynomial model, new now, new line fx, and I said it's uh, the size of 18, and it's supposed to be blue. So this is what you see here. And then I tell, the comma is really important. It's, if you forget comma, it starts to behave strangely. I say that it's equal to, and then the best model, fx, that's how I define, it catch the output. So this is not in these, uh, I can't remember the name of these now. <laughs> flying ears, uh, quotation uh, marks. Um, and here's the output. So you can see the data. And further down, I ask for the output. So here you can see all the parameters, the F statistics. And there's a one here, you can see. This one here is beyond 5%, so you may, if you really want to be, go on, you could remove the seventh author and test it again, because that one is not really significant, but close, so we keep it. And here you can then ask for 
the statistics where you get the estimate and you get T statistics, which is testing if, if the, the estimates are significant. Uh, and if I look into that one, you can see it's really significant here. But looking here, it's not. I have to go look deeper into this. Uh, but you have to trust me so far. If you compare with, this is the data extracted directly from uh, from. Uh, you remember the reference data. And the way I did that, you can see up here, uh, yeah, it's hiding in here. So it's again, I look for create the stream. I look for off estimate because I figure out that here I can find it. And then I tell it to, um, where are we find stream? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Yeah. Uh, here I, I the read list, I take out read list from the string, which is a file that's open, find word and two numbers, and do that 11 times. Then I get the data, and I close it again. And when I do that, uh, wrong one again. I get this output. And if we compare that, you can see the values are really the same. So just looking at this, there's no problem. Uh, Mathematica can handle 10th order polynomial with no problems. If you then try to plot, here I graphed the fit from Mathematica, and I just imported this uh, image. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, new, let's see, have I? Put that one too. Uh, show. See if I can find it. Yeah, I imported this, and I tell it it's an image. I have a show where I make the plot. If you recall, then I import the the GIF file which I could find in. This is just to teach you the nerdy things. I think. Um, did I put the file somewhere here? Back. This one, if you right click, you can copy the URL URL. And that's what I done. I put it in here and I defined the size. And with doing that, you will get <coughs> uh, this. And I've done the same with the residuals. So here you can see the residuals. If I want to compare the residuals from Mathematica, um, here's the model. And if you compare the two, they seem quite, uh, they, they seem to be the same. But if I look at the residuals, see, seconds. Yeah, let's try I'm back again. So here we have the residuals from the model which is uh, generated in Mathematica where you could recall the parameters are the same. But you can see they're not the same if you look at it. It's not much, but uh, they're not having the same shape. These three are different here. <coughs> so if I verify if this is the problem, if I use the data directly imported from uh, Mathematica, or oh, from the NIST, the homepage, and then create the parameters. I get exactly this plot. So 
It must be something with the parameters, but I will ask you to look into that uh, as an assignment. So the conclusion is, uh, mathematics can, can handle it, but you really have to be careful when you go up to higher order than five, uh, because you cannot uh, really seldom you can base that on some ground physical model or uh, other things. But it's important that you fit the curve, you look at the residuals, uh, the regression as a whole, and then get a feeling of it. And then you can use it as a kind of black box. Uh, and here, as I said, often you can defend first and second order polynomials, but if you go higher, you really have to be sure what to do. why you're doing it. The confidence interval here, we've already touched it, but let's continue. How do we calculate confidence intervals? And we will, I'll just take for the first degree of polynomial, and then we will let Mathematica do the job for you. If you recall uh, a linear regression, you have a1, you have x, and you have the crossing. Oh, interception with uh, the second axis, y-axis. The way you calculate that, the predicted value of the function, so that's how, uh, how much if you have the function, what is the span or, or uncertainty for that one? You calculate it like this. And if you want a confidence interval, you, you need to use this plus minus, I don't know if you have that, I think you have the t value and uh, the degrees of freedom. And it's a two-tailed one you normally use. Uh, yeah. Can I illustrate that? If, if you have the T distribution, which is quite similar to uh, the normal distribution, if you have a high degrees of freedom, then the tails are here. Can the T value be bigger, or can it also be smaller? I normally use a two-tailed one, and and normally you say this is the uh, 95% of it. And this is what, if it's bigger, then this is either smaller or this, this area here, some of this area. If it's out there, it's definitely not acceptable. So this is how you're spanning the thing. And you can ask Mathematica, and instead of using you, these t-tables, I guess you, I have to go back to this. If you look at a t-table here, you can say if it's two-sided and you want 95%, uh, then you can say I have, for example, nine degrees of freedom, and you get the number, the T number. If it's uh, single-sided, you use this one. And what you do when you use Matamaka, it's in fact using the single-sided, I think. Let's go back. I found this as a homepage how to do it. So when you ask this one for the 95%, you have to use the single sided because it's used, uh, remember the tails, only one of them and all of it like that. And you can see here you get the value. And if, okay, we can try to verify it. Let's see, three degrees of freedom, 97.5. Three point one eight two. Three point one eight two. So instead of using these tables, you can just use Mathematica. And that's quite nice. If you want for a future observation, that's if you I find a new planet where <coughs> uh, what is where will 95% of this planet be, for example? 
uh, then you have to add this here SEY is exactly the same as this one, but squared. And then you add this expression, uh, the standard error. So the confidence level there will be bigger. Let's see if I have that one. We can see when we start to look, if we use Mathematica now, if you look uh, for the 99% band, if you recall from the last one from the first order, polynomial of the NIST data, I know it's just bad, but straight line through it, but to get an idea of it, then we ask for the model, which is here, 99% confidence band, which is this one, And if we want to verify this is a T value, then we ask for T95 with this degrees of freedom, which is 80. You know, there was uh, 92 observation minus two, that is 80. So here you get, <coughs> sorry, here you get um, the T value. We can have a look at it just briefly. Uh, this one. Ignore the print, but here confidence band of the model, you use the mean prediction band. And I ask for confidence level of 99. If I want to use this one, see that I only use half, that's 1% left here. So I use half a percent, add that too, so it's single tail, even though it's double tail I need. And then I will get uh, the T value. Oh, wrong one. This one I have to double click. As you saw here, so that correspond. If you take future observation, the really difference there you can see is this number is bigger. That's all. All the rest is the same. So this number is bigger. And that's because the model you are quite certain of, but so you can see here, it's quite certain of this straight line is like this. And it's not really good, you can see. But if you take future observation, it's say because of it's really having this problems here is saying that 99% of them will be within this band. So if you find a new planet, try to find it, it will be within this band somewhere. That's what it can say. If you want more information, there is a nice one telling you how to do it. Uh, The idea was when I press this one, that it should show us. Did I use? HTTP. Mm, I have to look into that link, what is wrong. I'll be back with that one. Uh, the next assignment, which is the last assignment, <coughs> is that now I would like you to play with Excel and there hopefully you will get an idea of why it's nice to use Mathematica instead of Excel to, to solve this. There's uh, this YouTube. Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle and a brief tutorial on how no, no, to no. fit you and my guest. So if I go up to data. Uh, the idea here is that you can put your data here when you've seen this one, to, uh, how to do it, then you can 
kind of you make the square procedurals and you ask Excel to minimize it using the parameters, you will have a lot more here. You will have the A, B, C, D up to 11. And then you will get the fit to the data. And then see if it can do as well as good when you compare to the NIST values, uh, certified, certified values. Uh, if you want to import the data, uh, what did we have there? Uh, this file, if you're not tried that in Excel, you have this little uh, data import from web. You write the page and go, and you just say import. Hopefully it works. Yes, just put it there. Here you have the data, all the data now, but you cannot really use it. So you need to ask Excel to split it. So I just take the data here and I say, um, where do we have it? Data, text to columns, fixed width like this. Now it's split it, I say finish. And now you can see you have the Y here and you have the X. And normally what you do then is to I just turn them around. I press shift down and then I can move it. They just swap. So if I want to see these, uh, a scatter, there's something wrong here with the scaling. Uh, I'm not used to Excel, so let's see. Not that one, it was format axis I should take. Instead of, uh, I want to fix the minimum here to, what was it? Like that, I think. I think you can recognize uh, the graph from uh, Mathematica. And there you can also fit, make it a little bigger. Have a look. The problem here is you can add a trend line. But you cannot add a polynomial. You can add up until sixth order. You cannot add 10. And you can see sixth order is not really sufficient. And that's why you have to watch the, the YouTube in order to, to get MATLAB to perform what you want. Uh, I think that was it. Yeah, and uh, let's see, fit the turns out polynomial compared with the NIST certified for Geisner statistics. And then try to compare the performance uh, between Mathematica with Excel just by uh, starting the residual plots you can get. Remember, you can just copy the figure into Mathematica if you want to use Mathematica uh, to present your um, to hand in your assignments. And then evaluate the difference in the NIST certified parameters with the Excel of the central order polynomial. And what I would like to do, you can just use this notebook that I'll up upload after this. I'll ask you to extract the parameters uh, Mathematica find, and then subtract the two from each other and look at the difference in the parameters. And reflect on how big that uh, the impact is. I think that was it. See you Wednesday.